Boogie the man band coming round the band is boogie man band. Is boogie man band. Greetings, my Philippines, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horizon channel. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's video is actually not a horror-related subject that I'm going to be talking about. If you clicked on uh, this video, you probably can tell. I'm recording this really late at night, so I'm trying to keep my voice down a little bit. But um, this is part of my Boogeyman Break Time segment. This was a segment I started back in April of uh, 2019 where I wanted to focus on non-horror um, subjects. Um, so Fletch and Fletch Lives are two very important films to me. Um, these films were staples of my childhood. Um, I watched these when I was very a very impressionable child. Um, Fletch came out when I was 11, came out in the spring of 1985, and Fletch Lives came out when I was just about to turn 15 um, in March of 1989. Um, I was already a huge Chevy Chase fan when both of these films came out, um, and uh, just this cemented his status as an icon in my life and somebody that I looked up to. Um, I love these films. I quote these films still to this day. Um, it's been over 30 years since the last film came out and there's been start and stops for a third uh, Fletch film for decades. I first remember hearing about um, Kevin Smith and Jason Lee being attached to it in the early 2000s. There was also talk of Joshua Jackson being attached to it, Jason Sudeikis being attached to it, and, um, you know, nothing ever came to be. Um, and then I started hearing rumblings about John Hamm. Now, John Hamm is an actor I really respect. I've seen Mad Men. I've also loved him in films like Baby Driver and Bridesmaids. I think he's hilarious. He has that dry wit that I thought would be perfect. The, the franchise that Chevy Chase helmed has been long dormant, so I knew that they were gonna have to go with a new actor and kind of do a different route because those Fletch films, these Fletch films, are very much in the vein of Chevy Chase's style of humor. Um, I've heard that the Gregory McDonald uh, novels are different. I haven't read them. You know, this was a this was a tough one to digest when I started hearing that somebody else was going to be playing Flesh, despite the fact that I'm a huge fan of John Hamm, and I do think it was a good idea to cast him. When I started hearing that the film was going to production, that it was going to be released digitally and in theaters on the 16th, I'm recording this at midnight on September 16th. This did premiere on the 15th. I had early access on Amazon Prime, so I called it up and watched it here at home. I'm really excited to talk to you about this third film in the Fletch franchise. Just getting a case of valuable stolen paintings, the roguish, charming, and endlessly troublesome Fletch becomes the prime suspect in a murder. To prove his innocence, he must sift through a long list of suspects, from an art dealer to a missing place boy to a crazy neighbor to his own girlfriend. The movie stars John Hamm as Erwin M. Fletcher, um, Marcia Gay Harden as the Countess, Kyle MacLachlan as Horan, Lorenza Izzo as Angela, John Slattery as Frank, Aidan Mayuri as Grizz, and Roy Wood Jr. as Detective Monroe. Screenplay was done by Zev Borrow and Greg Matola, based on the novel by Gregory McDonald, and the movie was directed by Greg Matola. So to not really spoil anything for people uh, going into this film, um, I have seen that the film is getting really high marks. A lot of people are saying, and even John Hamm himself has said this is more geared towards uh, the interpretation of the character from the Gregory McDonald uh, novels. Um, it is less about a Chevy Chase vehicle. And I know that, you know, Chevy Chase kind of took, you know, they took the material and they kind of tailored it for Chevy Chase's style of humor in those original films. And uh, right out the gate, I want to say that I like John Hamm a lot. Um, it was different seeing him as Fletch at the very beginning of the film, but there was little things that he did, little touches that kind of made... Uh, little quirks to his character, his own. Um, while also, in a couple of instances, I noticed him paying a little bit of an homage to uh, some of Chase's more slapstick uh, humor without being overt. It's not in Los Angeles. In this one, he has been in Rome, he's now in Boston, and uh, he gets wrapped up in this new case. But, you know, you still have the character of Frank, his newspaper, uh, his boss at the paper. Now he's working in Boston. So there's 
there is that rapport between the two of them. Also, I thought it was cool that John Slattery, who played in Mad Men with um, John Hamm, was in this. I mean, they have a good rapport together, and I thought that that came off really well between the two of them. I'm a huge fan of Marcia Gay Harden. I think she's fantastic in everything. I also love Kyle MacLachlan. Um, Renza Izzo, I'm a big fan of. Um, she's been in many Eli Roth films like The Green Inferno and Knock Knock. She was married to Eli Roth for five years. Um, I've also seen her in shows like uh, Penny Dreadful, City of Angels, which I thought she was great in. And I really liked her in this as well. The other character I really enjoyed in this was the character of Grizz, played by Aiden Mayuri. She was the partner of Roy Wood Jr.'s Detective Monroe character. And I really thought the rapport between her and John Hamm was great. They both had that kind of dry wit. I just, I got the most laughs out of both of their interactions. Um, Roy Wood Jr. was probably one of the weak spots for me. I just didn't really care for the de Detective Monroe character. I don't know why. He just was irritating. Uh, this film is rated R. The first two Fletch films were rated PG, so this one has a little more coarse language, um, which was a little different. But, you know, I was glad that they kind of uh, made it, you know, uh, they, they it was a different style of, of storytelling with regards to this character. And I thought the movie really moved at a steady pace. I mean, it had a lot of good, you know, exposition scenes. There was a lot of good scenes where, you know, it establishes, you know, the type of character that Fletch is. Um, just sort of how he, you know, uses his manipulating skills to get what he needs or find out, you know, what he what is going to be helpful in helping solve this mystery or series of mysteries that he's really trying to uncover because he starts, he goes to Boston trying to find out one thing and gets involved in this murder mystery. And uh, I thought that was really cool how they both kind of, um, how they, how they, how the filmmakers and the screenwriters balanced all of this. Um, I did feel like the story dragged a little bit in spots towards the middle specifically, but I do think it wrapped up nicely. Um, I think the script could have been stronger. I think the direction could have been a little bit better. Um, I really didn't, I felt like there was times that there was great setup and sort of mediocre payoff. Um, whereas I always felt like, you know, the setups in the earlier Fletch films that uh, Michael Ritchie and Chevy Chase were involved in had a had sort of a snappier pace. And I just felt like this one kind of dragged a little bit in spots. And then there was times that it really picked up and things got moving and it got exciting. And like I said, I think it wrapped up nicely. And, uh, yeah, I had fun with uh, Confess Fletch. It's not a slam dunk. It's not my favorite film in the Fletch franchise, and I don't, it never will be. But, you know, like I said, I went into it with an open mind. You know, I have to take into consideration that I'm an older generation now. Um, I'm almost 50. These movies came out when I was a little kid. And, uh, you know, they'll always be, these will always be special movies to me. They'll always be two of my favorite films of all time. And uh, I'm grateful that I had these growing up. They, they really just, um, you know, they're the types of comedies that I love to watch still to this day. They make me laugh and uh, they never get old to me. And times are different now. You know, it's a different, you know, generation. They're, they're comedy, you know, they like different styles of comedy. And, uh, you know, this fits nicely, I, I assume, into uh, what Gregory and McDonald established in those novels. Um, like I said, I haven't read them. But uh, yeah, I had fun with this film. I would own it. Um, I'll add it to my Fletch collection. And uh, I will, you know, give John Hamm uh, a big thumbs up for paying respect to what Chevy Chase brought, in, but also making the character his own. Um, he was a lot of fun in the role. And uh, I really look forward to seeing him play the role again. So if I had to give Confess Fletch a rating on my scale, I would give it three skulls. Confess Fledge is available on Amazon Prime. I believe it's also in limited release in movie theaters. Check it out if you're a fan of those original films. I definitely recommend giving it a watch. Um, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Uh, would love to hear everybody's uh, thoughts on this film. If you've watched it, thanks so much again for stopping by the channel. And I will talk to you again real soon. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Right, fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. I've uh, been doing this for over 11 years and the horror genre is a passion of mine. And it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy. Stay scared as always.